Hello, it's Martin and I'm in Buckfast in the middle of Devon. I know it's a little bit random, but that's because I wanted to show you this charging site because it's a perfect example of how EV charging should work in practice. To introduce the location a little bit, what you can see and probably hear over there, that's the Devon Expressway, the A38, which is a major link between Exeter and Plymouth. And as you can see, this charging site is literally right off of it with Buckfast being halfway in between those two cities. The charging provider is Osprey and they are utilizing 16 of these chem power units. All of them are equipped with both CHAdeMO and CCS so even if you drive an older vehicle like for example the Nissan Leaf you do not have to be worried about availability. Also important to mention something we don't see often enough but is absolutely crucial to the future of EVs is towing charging opportunities and you see two out of these 16 bays are pull-through bays so even if you have a caravan or a trailer hitched up you do not have to unhitch just to plug in. They do support contactless payment so you don't need an app or any memberships to get your charge started. It is a little bit expensive at 79 pence per kilowatt hour but Osprey takes good care of their chargers and combined with these being chem power which tend to be quite reliable anyways at least it means you should have a trouble-free experience. In terms of power, the CHAdeMO side is always limited to 50 kilowatts, but these do support 800 volt cars natively, at which point they can provide up to 300 kilowatts. If you have a 400 volt based car like most of us do, it's 150 maximum. Most importantly, there is a lovely farm shop open seven days a week where you can get your coffees, cakes and refreshments for your journey. If you don't particularly care for the technical side of things, you can basically stop watching. If you visit this site, you will have a good experience. However, if you care about EVs and you have never heard of Chem Power, definitely stick around because there is some very clever stuff happening with the charging hardware, which is behind these wooden panels. But to explain that, I will need the help of a diagram. Let's start from the smallest level in the power hardware, the power module. It's basically a box which converts the power from the grid into power in the form of direct current which can flow right into your EV's battery. The power output per module is 50 kilowatts but can be further split into two 25 kilowatt channels. Just keep this in mind as it will become important later. Up to four of these modules can be stacked on top of each other in a cabinet to give a complete power of 200 kilowatts. But that's not the limit, as Chem Power's biggest cabinets, or officially called power units, have room for three of these vertical stacks, so a single cabinet can supply up to 600 kilowatts of charging power. There's also a lot of clever stuff happening behind the scenes, like rotation of which power modules get used to ensure even wear across all the components, for example. But that's enough of the little lecture, and let's see how all of this applies in practice. I peeked through the paneling and there are four of the power cabinets, which means even when they are fully fitted, that's four times 600 kilowatts of potential charging power available, which is 2.4 megawatts. Sounds like a lot, but in fact, if everybody plugged in with a Lotus Electra, which can pull 350 kilowatts, that's not quite enough for the site. And that's where the magic of these dispensers comes in. Camp Power calls them satellites. That's what the S in the name stands for, because that's literally what they are. All the clever charging and power conversion stuff happens over there, whereas this is literally just a cable with a plug for the vehicle. That's the reason why they are so slimline. From the side layout point of view, the beautiful benefit is that you can have these power units out of the way and they can reach the satellites up to 80 meters away. So you can have a pretty large parking lot covered. Even though these are the higher powered 800 volt version with up to 300 kilowatts of peak power, they do not feature liquid cooled cables. Chem Power makes an option for up to 400 kilowatts per plug in a dispenser but at that point you need to have the liquid cooling and it's a separate module which sits beside the satellite itself which provides the actual cooling for the cable. In terms of plugs as I mentioned you have got CHAdeMO, CCS both type 2 and type 1 depending on whether you are in US or Europe and speaking of the US you guys will be able to get them fitted with the NACS the Tesla port in the future as well. Lastly in terms of the user experience I really do like this cable management system the cables are basically suspended on these springs which means they can reach even pretty far out on these wide bays regardless of where your charge port is located this is flexible so if you need to pull it it does have some give in it but at the same time the cables are not lying on the floor they will not get run over and it also makes life easier for people with accessibility needs. 
There are also these nice little details, like for example, these LEDs on the side, the green means that the charger is available, whereas if you are actually plugged in and charging, they turn blue and these show you your state of charge. Obviously these ones are full because I'm already at 95%, but let me show you the touchscreen as well, because this is really how a touchscreen should work. Super responsive, like a smartphone, and it also gives you lots and lots of details. Again, if you're not an EV enthusiast, I hope you clicked away by this point because this is about to get very nerdy. Even if you don't care for any of that, you can always see the basics. How much charge you have, what power you are getting, how much energy you've received, and obviously the total cost of the session. Importantly, Campower is very good at communicating what is happening because you see right here, it shows you that the vehicle is the limit in this case. Obviously, if you visit any of the forums, you know that sometimes EVs are not handed over properly and people are shocked to see that they are only charging at 50 kilowatts on a 150 kilowatt station if their EV is, for example, not rated for 150 kilowatts or they plug in with a cold battery, too high state of charge, etc. The data goes one step further and it's really kind of a hidden hack. You can press the battery icon and then you go into full nerd mode where you can see the graph of the charging power over time and likewise how the state of charge increased over time. Now I'm afraid we will have to try to improvise a little bit because I will be trying to film two screens with an action camera because the best part of this system is remote connectivity. Obviously you do not have to wait at the charger and keep looking at the information. You can just open your camera on your phone and scan the little QR code you are presented with. When you do that, it takes you to a website, which is basically a live portal with all of the charging information. And even here, you can still click on the battery icon and you still get the same nerdy stats you could get before. This is not only great for those who are curious about what's happening with their EV, but if you have an older vehicle, which for example doesn't have the 3G or 4G connectivity, and you don't have a mobile app to go with it, so you can't see the live state of charge like I can with this Mini, it means that you can still have that information just provided by the charger instead of the car, and you don't have to keep jumping out of the services just to check up on how the car is doing, making sure that the charge hasn't been interrupted, and you know when to resume your journey. The site is now starting to fill up and obviously we are still nowhere near the maximum capacity, but let's consider the theoretical limits. If all of the power units are firing at full power, that's four times 600 kilowatts, that gives you the 2.4 megawatts in total. Whereas if everybody with a 300 kilowatts capable EV plugged in with a warmed up battery at low state of charge, they would need basically double of what the site is capable of providing. But the likelihood of that happening in the real world is very low. And if you look closely, even here you can start seeing the magic of the dynamic power sharing, because if you note here, the peak power has now dropped from 300 to 250 kilowatts on this unit. And that's because of how they are wired up. Basically, few of them are grouped into the single cabinet, so as more cars have plugged in, that is the leftover capacity on this loop. And that is the reason why I absolutely love these Camp Power chargers, because it means that you can put in relatively cheap power supply into the site, yet you can still have lots of chargers available to the users. And there is no caveats. They don't have to be grouped into high power and low power. You don't need to know where to plug in. You don't need to know whether you need to leave a gap in between cars because the power is split from the same stall. Nothing like that. You can basically plug in wherever you want and you will by and large receive the power you are meant to receive as cars are rotating through. Remember in the beginning of the video where I mentioned there are the 25 kilowatt power channels? Well, that's basically the resolution of the system. So imagine there is only 125 kilowatts of power available at this site and a Polestar 2 rolls in which requests the full 150 kilowatts. Well, it will only get 125 kilowatts, but as some of the other cars are starting to reach higher state of charges, the first one which falls below a 25 kilowatt chunk will free up a power channel, which will then be dynamically allocated to set Polestar so it can charge at the full power it requested. I hope I got the message across about why I like these Kemp power chargers so much. I think it's just a fantastic example of working smarter 
rather than harder because obviously you always have the option of supplying 350 kilowatt banks of chargers but it's very very expensive and requires very expensive and complicated grid connections whereas a setup like this especially if it was supplemented by on-site batteries is I think the solution in the near future and keep in mind it doesn't come at the cost of user experience the technology is all transparent to the drivers they just plug in and it simply works I think that's about it. Thank you very much for watching if you made it all the way to the end of the video. Subscribe if you want to see more EV content. And yeah, I will see you in the next one.